Good morning, folks. For the first time in nine days, we've had an entire day without strong solar flaring. I'm grateful. But we've got things to watch, a planetary alignment about to occur, bad information in need of correction, and more amazing details about the great solar storm from last weekend. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find quiet. Finally, solar maximum doesn't give tons of breaks, but we're in a little one here. We do still have plenty of sunspots, so it's uncertain how long it's going to last. While none can compete with the massive spot that is turned over to the far side, we have four multi-umbral sunspot active regions, the one on the south is growing slowly, and the incoming group on the left just received its official number, 3685. Good news is there is space between the umbral cores here. We'll be watching for development as it comes in to face the Earth by Monday. We are about to have a few planetary alignments here as well, folks. Jupiter is heading behind the Sun for geocentric conjunction of the two. It's also known as the heliocentric opposition of Earth and Jupiter. Also, Venus will be doing the same thing a few days later, and you can see them both here on Soho Lasco coronagraphs. Jupiter is on the left panel and Venus on the right. The reason they have lines coming out of them is light oversaturation. The cameras are super sensitive to capture CME plasma, so direct sunlight reflection off the planets is like pointing your cell phone at the sun and not adjusting the image. Planetary geometry back in play. Folks, I know many of you saw Glenn Beck's guest, Hugh Ross, a couple days ago. I like Glenn, but Hugh was a bit of a catastrophe. His comments on solar forcing of the atmosphere and the lack of risk in a magnetic pole shift were a crime against truth. I would love to chat with one of them and bring the receipts. Having people reach out would be helpful. Let's get a bit of eye candy up next with Juno's best shot yet of Europa. The icy shell of Jupiter's moon is quite the enigma as it appears to be disconnected, free-floating, unlocked from the planet, and able to move around. Up next, folks, the data coming in on the great solar storm of this past weekend is incredible and there is probably more coming. We thought the Puerto Rico aurora was amazing. Well, how about New Caledonia in the southwest Pacific? They're not supposed to get them. There are no reported sightings there ever, let alone a naked eye sighting. But now the count is at one. That reporting on spaceweather.com comes with a graphic of the best low-latitude aurora ever spotted. And folks, every other instance on this list took massive flares above X-20 and most are multiple impact scenarios. The fact that this just happened in a first-ever location with only X-1 through X-3 impacts is asinine. And following up our recent videos on the magnetic pole shift, I can say there is no chance this would ever happen without the weakening of our planetary magnetic protection. The story keeps writing itself. We're watching it all. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.